Welcome everyone, it's Maximus. Thank you so much for joining me today on this video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So, we are once again stepping into the world of main battle tanks. Now, first of all, let me just quickly apologise for my voice. I am a little sick right now, so unfortunately it's not going to sound the greatest. Um, but we are once again stepping into the world of main battle tanks and discussing a particularly interesting vehicle, which again, I do not know much about as of recently. Uh, did some research and thought, well, let's make a video on it, because actually this is a very impressive main battle tank. Now, to clarify before I go any further, I would like to remind everybody that this video is purely informative and I'm trying my best to use resources and factual information that I can find from the best of my ability. That being said, if there are potential areas that are maybe not uh, coordinating with the information that you have, I do apologise. Like I said, I'm looking for the best sources of information on these tanks and uh, trying to give you as much of an accurate description as I can. With that also being said, what I may say is this video is not designed to belittle or diminish anyone else's opinion on other tanks out there. I know for those of you who uh, have very strong passion for tanks, including myself, uh, have a very strong opinionated uh, view on certain tanks, and I do not want to create this video to say that this tank is better than the other tank. This is not what that video is about. There are hundreds of videos out there of the top 10 tanks and the best tanks in the world. Look guys, I've operated around tanks a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and there is no best tank. Okay, there isn't. It doesn't work like that, in my opinion. Okay, every tank is suited for its own particular environment, its own particular army, its own particular military strength. They all have their own key features that some other vehicles may not have. So this isn't a video to try and say, oh, this is the best tank in the world, or this is the worst tank in the world, or this is better than that, and better than this. It's not what it's about. So please, if you do have an opinion or a comment or some sort of... Um, you know, discussion to have about these particular videos and my tanks. Uh, just try and keep it respectful, and I understand that, you know, uh, some people have a very strong view on certain vehicles being their particular favourite. Just take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, this is, like I said, just an informative video to show you a brief overview of what this tank is about. So, as I mentioned before, I really didn't know much about this tank. It's one of those tanks that gets put back in the, you know, it's not in the spotlight as much as other main battle tanks out there, like the Abrams, the Armata, the T-90, the Macarver, all the other tanks that we all seem to know and love. Um, and for me, I felt kind of uh, disappointed in myself for not knowing about this tank, because it is actually very, very impressive. Now, we all know South Korea's constant pressure from the North Korean government, um, and the whole political situation is very volatile. And uh, I'm not going to go into that because this isn't a video about politics, but we know that the pressure from North Korea is basically a military one, and South Korea requires a vehicle, a main battle tank, that is able to defend its borders if, and hopefully never, it comes to it. Now, the pride of the South Korean army nowadays is pretty much the K2 Black Panther. Now, I'm not going to try to say it in Korean because I'm going to embarrass myself. Now, let's try it. Huikapu. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I have no idea how to speak Korean. But it's one of the latest main battle tanks to date. Uh, it's freshly introduced as of 2014 and it's certainly in the shortlist of some of the very best in the world. Um, as I said before, it's purely just a statement. It's not something that I'm saying is factual. It's been built by Hyundai Rotem at 8.5 million US dollars. This was a far cry for the M48K it replaced or even compared to the K1, its predecessor. In fact, it was planned by the South Korean Agency for Defense development to get rid of foreign parts as much as possible and also enabling export capabilities without third-party licensing problems. Of course, the K1A1 already showed the way and was superior to any North Korean tank at its time. Development started in 1994 and Rotem's very first designs in the late 1990s tried an unmanned turret, and the Rheinmetall's experimental 140mm smoothbore gun was also, for the time, until company reserves reversed the more conventional 120mm gun, envisioned. With the XK2 program, engineers took a compromise eventually with a 120mm L55 main smoothbore gun, with a reconfigurable cradle able to mount the 140mm if need be. By 2006 already, the K2 production model was ready for testing. Total expenditures for the project arose to about 230 million US dollars. Production started in 2007 on March 2nd at Changao in South Korea. A local power pack was designed based on the German MTU 890 with 1500 horsepower strong, but it showed a considerable amount of teething problems that delayed the operational service acceptance for about two years. 
There was a new bump in 2011 when the Defence Acquisition Programme Administration had to admit that the engine would be replaced by the original MTU-890 instead, at least for the first hundred, delaying operational introduction of the K2 until March 2014. Both the K2 and the K1A1 guns were of the same calibre, but the former displayed a much longer barrel, 1.3 metres or 4.3 feet, for a greater muzzle velocity of 1,400 metres a second in return, enabling for much better levels of accuracy and penetration values. In addition, mobility was approved as it could ford 4 metres of water without short preparation. Posture control function linked with the hydromatic suspension was also a new feature, allowing to raise and lower the tank's silhouette. While the laser warning system directly pointed the turret towards the source of illumination, saving precious seconds. As like most modern main battle tanks, the hull is a multi-layered one, with a welded hardened steel core, covered by modules of composite armour, details of which are very classified. The latter comprises of the K2 PIP non-explosive reactive armour and explosive reactive armour blocks, in particular to the turret's front. Test shows that the frontal armour was impervious to the 120mm armoured piercing thin stabilised discarding sabre round fired from an L55 gun. There is also an active layer with a soft kill anti-missile system that would be completed with the K2 PIP by a hard kill anti-missile system that can defend and track against targets and incoming missiles. To complete the active protection, a millimetre band radar system is installed, providing a missile approach warning system otherwise known as the MORS. Sensors transmit data in real time to the computer that can triangulate incoming projectiles and enable automatic release of visual and infrared screening smoke grenades, as well as warning the crew. Of course, collective nuclear, biological and chemical systems with overpressure is fitted as standard, completed by atmospheric sensors. The Korean Active Protection System, otherwise known as CAPS, is locally developed and is a hard kill active protection system using three-dimensional detection, tracking radar and thermal imager to detect incoming threats. Range is 150 meters around the tank, while a defensive rocket can destroy incoming targets at 10 to 15 meters away. CAPS deals with rocket propelled grenades and anti tank guided missiles, and the unit price is around $600,000. The core of the K2 lays in its locally developed Hyundai WIA smooth bore 120mm caliber main gun, complemented by an autoloader similar to the one used on the Leclerc reducing the crew and allowing for a much greater rate of fire of around 10 rounds per magazine. To serve it, there was a 16 shell ready ammunition magazine with a total of 40 carried between the hull and the turret. Secondary armament comprised of a roof mounted 12.7mm 50 caliber machine gun and the K6 heavy machine gun of around 3,200 rounds, and a 7.62mm coaxial light machine gun with around 12,000 rounds. The main ammunitions are the APFSDS along with a kinetic energy penetrator round, secondly for lightly armoured targets or soft targets by a multi-purpose heat chemical energy round similar to the M830A1 heat MPT. Importantly, there is also specifically developed Korean Smart Top Attack Munition, otherwise known as a Kastan. Sort of a fire and forget autonomous ammunition that operates at around 2 to 8 kilometers, launched in a mortar type high trajectory. Upon arrival to the target, the onboard millimeter band radar is enabled and after opening a parachute, it gives time for the infrared and radiometer sensors to seek targets and when spotted, an explosively formed penetrator is launched from a top-down position. This is a good system to target these generally less well-protected areas of the enemy tanks. Choice of the target can also be commanded by the gunner from a remote link inside the tank. In terms of mobility, the K2 is very impressive. The engineers are actually able to install a Samsung Tequin gas turbine engine which is an APU that could boost speed for short runs. It develops an extra 100 horsepower and is also able to be used as an auxiliary unit for onboard systems and some defence systems when the main diesel engine is shut down. This turbine also helps for minimal thermal and acoustic signatures and to save on fuel. The main power unit is a 4 cycle 12 cylinder water cooled diesel engine which develops around 1500 horsepower. Originally built by Hyundai, the second series planned in 2014 plus, whereas the first batch of 100 was powered by the German MTU-80 diesel. This power pack gave the Korean main battle tank a top speed of up to 70 km an hour on flat roads and up to 52 km an hour off road. The K2 can ford up to 4.1 meters of water with a short preparation, normally around 20 to 30 minutes, and a real improvement over the previous 2 hours or so to ford the 2 meters deep on the previous K1. The snorkel system doubled as a conning tower for the tank commander, 
One of the solutions was to allow to fill the hull with 500 gallons of water to have a balanced pressure and to avoid excessive buoyancy from inside. The K2s that are currently in service entered service in around 2013, early from around about 25 of them, and in 2014 officially as stated with the German MTU engine instead of the domestic power pack for the first batch. As of today, according to the military factory, 241 K2s have been delivered by a consortium including Hyundai Rotem Agency Samsung, Doosan, World Industries, Ace Corporation. The total number of tanks planned for South Korea is around 680 for the late 2020s and early 2030s, including the upgraded variant the K2 PIP. If so, South Korea would field quite an impressive array of modern tanks to replace its age-old M48 M60K, added to the already existing 1500 modernised PIP K1 and K1A1 tanks for the grand total of 2180 modern main battle tanks, to compare, for example, to the 400 Leclerc's in service with the French army. According to the most of sources that I found out there, around 602 were deployed and around 100 more requested by the army as of 2016 in May, and they are to be deployed on the border against North Korea. The K2 PIP is an upgrade intended for the near future around this year to 2020 to improve the early batches. It comprises of upgrading of the semi-active hydropneumatic suspension unit to a fully active unit, high resolution real-time terrain scanning system to improve the suspension behavior of rough terrain, essentially planning ahead the nearby terrain up to 50 meters away, calculating the optimal position of the suspension, integration of a hard kill anti-missile system, otherwise known as CAPS, addition of non-explosive reactive armor modules, and ongoing tests on the 120mm L55 electrothermal chemical gun. There is also the export of this particular tank, otherwise known as the ALTE. Turkey adopted the K2, indeed, after competing in a competition held against the Leclerc and Leopard 2. The K2 won, and in June 2007 negotiations ended with an arms deal contract of around 540 million US dollars with Okatar for licensing the K2 design in Turkey. So guys, as you can see, this is a very impressive main battle tank, and I really hope you enjoyed this overview of this tank today. Uh, let me hear your opinions and your comments on it. I want to know what you think of this tank. What do you feel is its pros, its cons? Do you feel like it will keep up with the modern standard of main battle tanks today? Do you think it's something that is going to be exported more? Give me your opinions on it. Um, I mean, a lot of people have touched base in the past on some of my other videos in terms of the auto-loading system. Uh, something that I definitely feel that modern tanks are definitely going to integrate. Do I agree with it? Uh, yeah, I'm starting actually to come around a little bit, which is uh, something I was kind of surprised at. Considering my last video, a lot of people gave me a lot of information and input that kind of changed my mind a little bit. Um, that's not saying I'm completely against manual loaders or completely for auto loaders, but it is something I'm considering for sure. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Please, please, please leave a like if you enjoyed it. And if you disliked it, leave a dislike. I mean, it's completely subjective. I understand that this isn't for everyone, and maybe you just don't like my videos. I totally understand it. But please, if you do have an opinion or a comment, please be respectful to one another. Um, I don't want to, you know, have to jump in on the comments section and people just fight in an hour. Just kind of silly, really. It is just a tank, guys, at the end of the day. Um, also, guys, if you haven't checked out um, my Discord channel, please feel free to. Uh, the link is in the description below. I'm also on Facebook, so if you want to share the video around, please feel free to. Uh, and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. I really would appreciate it. Uh, I've got plenty more videos coming up in the near future. I will be doing a video on the T-14 Armata, for sure. Uh, and other main battle tanks that are coming out um, pretty much being upgraded and developed. Uh, including the Macava, which I looked in some research lately, and I'm going to put a video on that pretty soon here. So I uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you again so much for watching, and all the best. Bye-bye.